Year 3 edition. In Year 3, what has been learnt in Year 1 and 2 is built upon. In this example, we have 58 add 24. The children would be encouraged to use a number line and place 58, the larger number, at the start of the number line. The larger number is placed first so that the children add the smaller number and there is less likelihood of mistakes. They are encouraged to recognise that in 24 they have two tens and four units. Starting at 58, they would be first encouraged to add the tens. They could add this in a whole 20 or in two individual tens. Looking at the easier option, 58 add 10 is 68. 68 add another 10 is 78. I have added one 10, another 10, I've added two 10s, I've added my two 10s. I've added the 10s, I now need to add the units. I've got four units. I'm at the number 78. Children at this point would be encouraged to recognise that they need to bridge through a 10. Remembering year one and two skills, bridging through 10 means jumping to the next number that ends in a zero. This is a multiple of 10. The number after 78 that ends in a zero is 80. To get to 80 from 78, we add two. We need to add four units. So far, we've added two. We've got two left to add. 80, add our final two, takes us to 82. So our final answer to 58 add 24 is 82, using a number line. As children become more confident, those jumps could be done more quickly. The two tens could be added as a 20. The two twos might possibly be jumped as a full four, depending on the children's skills. 58 at 24 is also the challenge that we have here. Children would also be given this skill, which wouldn't be using a number line, but would be partitioning. In partitioning, as in year two, we split the number into tens and units. First of all, we have the tens. In the first number, we have five tens, which is 50. In the second number, we have two tens, which is 20. 50 add 20 is 70. Children would be encouraged to use their knowledge that 5 add 2 is 7. So 50 add 20, which are both 10 times bigger, gives us the answer 70, which is also 10 times bigger. So far, we've added the tens. We now need to add the units. 8 add 4. 8 add 4 is 12. We've added our tens. We've added our units. Now we need to add our two answers back together to get our final answer. I have 70 and I want to add on 12. Children could use a number line for this, but hopefully by this point their skills would be such that they would realise that 70 add on their 110 is 80, add on their two units is 82. So our final answer to 58 add 24 is 82. If we go back to our number line skills, we got the same answer. We just used a different method. As mentioned in year two, children would be encouraged to use both of these methods and practice them, and then encouraged to decide which method works best for them, which one gives them most likely the better answer. Moving on to another example. Here we have 45 add 19. A similar example was used in year two where we added nine and we rounded and adjusted. When we're adding something that is very near to a multiple of 10, like 19, we make it to the next number that ends in zero so that it is an easy thing to add. On our number line, we start with 45. We want to add 19, but we know that we can make 19 20 by adding an extra one on. If I add on 20, that's easy because I'm adding on two tens to the four tens I already have. So 45 add two tens is 65. 
Now I've got to adjust. I've added on 20. I only needed to add on 19, so I've added an extra one. I now need to take one off to get to my actual answer of 64. So my answer to 45 add 19 is 64. The reason that we add 20 and take away one is because adding 10s and taking away one are easy. Adding 19 is much trickier and the children are more likely to make mistakes. Here we have 67 add 24. As the children move through the school and they become more confident, they will be encouraged to use um, vertical methods of addition. In the summer term of year three, they should begin to look at these vertical methods. They are still using their knowledge of partitioning, so it's a longer method than when the children get further up the school. We do this by putting the numbers on top of each other and lining up the tens and the units. So I have my units in a line and I have my tens in the line and children are encouraged to recognise that. We then look at adding the numbers, first of all their units, then their tens. And we do this using brackets at the side. And first of all, I'm going to add my units. I've got seven units, add four units. Seven, add four. I then want to think about adding my tens. And again, I'm going to do this and record it in brackets. I've got six tens, which is 60. And I want to add that to two tens, which is 20. Alongside my number sentences, I'm going to write my answers. Seven, add four is 11 and the children are encouraged to recognise that that also needs to be in line with their tens and their units. 60 add 20 is 80, again keeping it in line. Another line is drawn before we actually finish our addition. 1 add nothing is 1. 1 10 add 8 tens is 9 tens. So my final answer is 91. This might seem quite a long-winded method, however, it's slowly getting children used to realising that the vertical method is a quick and easy method to use. But it is doing that, showing them that first of all they've got to add the units, then they've got to add the tens, which is slightly different from the partitioning method that they've used up until now.